fast. Uh, we're we're going to do class for a half hour, so you can put your laptops away now. I know that some of you are still trying to cram that last article you didn't read, but, you know, listen, man. Just doesn't matter, really. Yo, seriously, put your laptops away. Laptops. <laughs> dude, come come up here. Have a seat, dude. Yo, hang on. Uh, yo, seriously, bro in the cap. Yeah, exactly. Put your laptops, put, close your laptops, all right? Okay. So, um, give me one second, bro, and then you're and then you're on. Hey, um, I want to say a couple things. Um, we we are going to return to the to the last class um, and re return to that conversation and. You know, like one thing that we didn't have enough time for the volunteers when I, when I did, I, I kind of got lost a little bit. And it's really hard. I, you know, I looked down at my watch and it was like 12 minutes to, to four. And I said, oh, okay, great. I, I have plenty of time. I have 10 minutes. And then I looked down again and it was five minutes after four. And I, and I thought five minutes had gone by. And, I, and so the point being... I missed, and we missed an opportunity to really have more of a conversation. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna return to that at some point. Now that we talked about it a little bit, those of you who are not paying attention to what's happening in Israel and Palestine, maybe pay a little bit of attention. So when we come back to the conversation, you'll be ready for it um, and ready to ask some questions. So uh, with that in mind also, I, I am in, we, we have a lot of people who have filled out the volunteer form, but it would be nice to have a few more international students. Um, there, there are quite a number of you, but it's, I never know, we don't, I don't know what conversation we're having at any one time. And so it's always really nice to have people who are like this guy here. So, uh, so I want to encourage you if you're thinking about it, and you're not really certain, fill out the volunteer form, okay? All right, man. So we're, I'm going to have a conversation with two uh, gentlemen. Class, why do you wear that? Dude, why do you wear that? That's the title of today's class. And you're going to answer it. And then uh, Jasim's going to answer it on a different issue. So introduce yourself, man. Tell us why you wear that. <laughs> in New Jersey. Um, I was born in Morristown, New Jersey. I've spent my entire life here. Um, I'm a sophomore and I'm majoring in finance. Sophomore majoring in finance from Morristown. Yeah. All right, man. So, uh, all right, man. Ans answer the question, my friend. Um, on the most like simple, like the most simple explanation I can give to that is just religion. Um, Commonly, we're Sikhs. I'm a Sikh. Um, we follow Sikhi. Um, commonly, we're mistaken. Wait, how do you pronounce it? Sikhi. 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 Um, commonly, Sikhi is mistaken for Islam. Um, it's a, it was really big after 9-11 because you saw all these photos of Osama bin Laden wearing a turban, and automatically everyone assumed if you were wearing a turban, you were uh, a Muslim. Um, but I'm a Sikh. Uh, my family's from India. Um, and one of the core beliefs that Sikh men or Sikh values is that we wear a turban. Um, and underneath the turban, um, I, my hair's never been cut. So my hair goes down to about my hips, um, and it's never been cut since birth. So. Never been cut even since birth? Never been cut. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I used to be the faculty advisor to the Penn State Sikh, Sikh Student, Student Association, Association. Yeah. Yeah. for quite a number of years, actually. Uh, so, so when you, do you see your, so you will never cut your hair? Uh, no, no, never. And if, if you live to be 100, 
just it just hangs out. It's gonna, <laughs> but it stops growing. Yeah, um, point, it right? stopped growing, so now it's like some people have really um, we call it heavy hair, um, and their yeah. hair just like extremely long. Um, but my hair has stopped growing for the past few years. It's kind of just hangs around my hips. Uh huh. Um, but I tie it up all the time, so mm -hmm. it really doesn't come in my way. Sometimes I forget I have long hair. And and so walk us through, right? Say something about uh, just first off wearing a turban. How, how is it to wear a turban? Man? So um, I'm from a place called Stewartville, New Jersey, and um, that town or the city or the town that I grew up in from around second grade, so eight years old to all the way to 18, basically, it's about 96 percent white, um, and it's one of not the but it's one of the only red counties in New Jersey. Um, and growing up, uh, like if, at least for my first few years of uh, like elementary school and like growing up in like a town like that, um, one of the earliest forms of just like, not even racism, I just think um, like we're just kids, like kids, it's yeah, kids exposure, kids. Yeah. Um, was 2008, I think that's when Osama bin Laden was killed. And it was preschool and a girl came up to me and she was like, I'm so sorry your daddy died. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and at that point, like, I knew something had happened, but I looked at her, and I was like, what? Like, my dad just dropped me off. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and, you know, another factor to add on that, um, my father cut his hair in 2001 around the 9-11 attacks because mm. he used to work in the city, and having a turban at the time was a dangerous thing to have. Yeah, um, yeah. Was, you know, if you don't know, quite a number after 9-11... Uh, a number of six, 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 six were killed. Uh, yeah, thinking they, they were you were you were Muslim. Yeah. Um, one Completely of the, different religion. But. Yeah, one of the first deaths after 9/11, immediately after, was a sick man. Uh, he was a taxi driver. But my dad has his hair. Well, he had his hair cut, and my brother cut his hair in, uh, when he was a sophomore. Uh -huh. He had your class too. Uh -huh. um, but growing up, so from the ages of around eight, nine, when my brother was uh, in high school, I was the only one in my family who wore a turban. And all of my like, uncles, aunts, they were all in India. Um, so like growing up, uh, even in school, I was the only kid wearing a turban. I think in this class, I probably am. And I think on campus as well, usually. Um, there's a very small number. Yeah, there's a very small number of six on campus or like, um, around my area as well. But um, growing up, it's always been like sticking out like a sore thumb uh, wherever I go. And it's okay. And so the purpose of not cutting your hair, okay? Did you? Can you yeah. just say something about that? Um, so Sikhi starts with uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. He was like, so we have ten gurus basically, and uh, one of our big principles is Ekon God, which means we believe there's one God. Um, which is a big belief in us. So we're saying like whether you follow Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, whatever the religion may be, um, it's our belief that no one is necessarily wrong. They're all just praising one God and they all have their own way of achieving um, safety or whatever you want to call it's, it's it. Achieving, you know, like a divine elevation. A divine elevation, yeah. yeah you could say that. Um, but Sikhs are, it's a... Uh, the turban comes in a very historical context. Um, if you go to the Middle East or uh, even Asia, the turban, just an overall turban, is a very common thing. Yeah. Um, so around uh, 1400s, which was our first guru, um, he started wearing a turban. And it's believed that that was one form of just identifying a Sikh, somebody who's a follower of the religion. Um, but it was our 10th guru, which was uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, who initiated that any Sikh man um, should wear a turban not only because you can recognize a Sikh wherever you go, but also um, a Sikh symbol is a double-edged sword, um, two swords and a throwing disc. Um, and that's because our religion is born out of um, a lot of violence, um, a lot of fighting, um, especially with the Mughals, uh, the Mughal Empire. Um, and during war, um, with this belief that you would wear, uh, wear a turban, um, they needed a way, almost like a helmet of sorts, that you would wear during war. Um, and what you get is what I'm wearing right now. Um, and there's a lot of variations of this. There's people who wear like a pointed one. Um, there's round ones. There's tall ones. There's all sorts of turbans. And that has, of course, like changed over time as um, perfections. But key, yeah, but the key is, it, it's a, Sikhism is a very peaceful religion though it's a peaceful religion i if i could compare it to any religion i'd do it to buddhism but yeah. it's a very and although it's part of not a part of buddhism although it's similar 
uh, the one belief that's very strict is that you never want to engage first, but if someone is, is uh, persecuting you, if someone's coming after you, you're supposed to stand up and fight back. Yeah, and, and, and protect other people. And protect other persecuted. religions, um, whether that be um, throughout history, whether yeah. that be Muslims or Hindus, you always, it's a key factor that you want to protect anyone's right to praise whatever God that they yeah. want to. Yeah, that's, like a, that's a really important piece of Sikhism. Yeah. Hey, so I see you have a kata. Yeah. I, I, I wore a kata for many years, <laughs> and, and I didn't, uh, and, and I took it off at some point, mm -hmm. maybe about three years ago. And, but, but for me, the, the kata was um, just a, like a, a symbol. It just reminded me of, of my connection, right? Yeah. Like the, in the way that, well, ex explain, explain it. Yeah, um, Sikhs have five Ks that we follow. Um, one of them is Karpan. Karpan is sword. It's a double-edged sword that um, any baptized Sikh wears. I'm not uh, fully baptized Sikh, um, but they wear a Karpan. Second is Gesh, which is hair, which I do have. Uh, third is Kachera, which is like this loose garment that you wear. Um, Karpan, Gesh, and then Kara is one of them. Kara is um, probably the easiest if you're in public ever um, and someone has their hair cut, you can't tell if they're sick or not. Usually a Kara is your sign. Um, but there's a lot of meanings to it. A lot of people have their own meanings for it. For me, I wear on my dominant hand. It's kind of like uh, before doing anything, it's kind of like a reminder of what you're doing, whether that be anything bad, good, whatever it may be, that God is, you know, it's kind of like a, it's always with you. Um, and also historically, uh, the purpose of this would be, it was a lot uh, thicker in one point, and they would wear these on both of their uh, hands. So if a sword was to strike your arm, it would hit the kara first before your hand. Today it's gotten smaller, and um, yeah. some of them get darker, silver, and there's gold ones. But um, so that's one of the reasons that we wear a kara. Dude, uh, it's okay. So a couple things on the. Can you go to, can you go to the next slide? So I was in. Uh, so Brendan, we used to have our team meetings for. We had a project in Afghanistan, and our team meetings in New, in New Delhi. So this was one of the temples I went to um, and really felt connected here. Go, go to the next slide. This is our part of members of our team. That's Mr. Rashidi on the left, who's probably watching today. Uh, he's they're from Afghanistan. The guy on the right, is, that's Maziar from Iran. And the woman in the middle is from Penn State. And the next slide, though, is the one I want to show you. Go to the next one. Um, so. This is the kitchen, right? This is the dining area. So part of, the, you know, and the reason I feel really connected to, to Sikhism because of, first off, the tenants, every one of them, I, including the Mother Earth, the Earth itself is sacred, is yeah. really sacred. And, and, I, and I, feel, I feel that, that connection. But also um, ministering to those who don't have. Yeah. So like in the temple, it's like you're always feeding people. So in this particular temple, they, every day they fed tens of thousands of people. Our main Gurdwara is in Amritsar. Uh, it's in Punjab. Um, that's called the Harmandar Sahib. It's the American, as we call it, the Golden Temple. Um, but there you can always get a free meal, uh, 24-7, 365, constantly. Um, yeah. And that's because it's one of our core beliefs that um, everyone, so as you can see, there's only mats, there's no tables or anything like that, and that's because um, one of the core beliefs in the very beginning is that everyone's equal. It doesn't matter if you're rich, doesn't matter if you're poor. Yeah. So this is one of the times when if you're eating, you're all eating on the floor. Um, you're all and eating. You're, and you don't know who you're eating you're, next to. It doesn't matter. I, when I went to uh, the Hermandir Sahib in India, um, and we were having langar, uh, which is that uh, free community meal, um, I sat down to some workers who had been working all day um, on construction um, outside, and they looked over and they were like, are you an American? And I was like, yeah. But it kind of hit the, in that moment that these people, it was their first meal of the day, they were you know, working outside all day, and I had yeah. the privilege of just walking in and having a meal. But um, it's very much a big belief that if you are eating, if you are going to this, um, not only is it free for everyone, there's no charge, there's no service or anything like that, but also a very big emphasis on everyone being equal. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. It really feels, it, I think that it, it, so many religions have that, 
the, the focus on egalitarianism, right? And, and it is important, but uh, I find that so, so interesting about Sikhism is, is that emphasis. So when I see people, I know people don't understand turbans, and I know it's like, oh, this is a really cool religion. It's the fifth largest religion in the world. So it's like we ought to really know what it is, you know. Dude, awesome, man. Uh, that's it. Dude. When I started my first semester, so that was in the fall, actually, um, like the first few days on campus, I was kind of just like looking around, trying to see if, like, it's a big campus. There's, what, 50,000 students? Yeah. Right, student body. Um, but I didn't. And like, you, I can see some Sikhs here and, uh, here and there, but um, one of the things about wearing a turban is, it is it's a very difficult thing to do. I don't think that uh, it's an easy thing to do necessarily just because yeah. I do know Sikhs who go to the school who don't wear it. They wear a hat instead. Yeah. Or uh, they'll tie their hair back and put a bandana on or one of those things because it is hard to just stick out. Um, it's hard to just walk into a room and just instantly have always... Always have everybody's eyes are always on you because you're just sticking out. Yeah. Um, so although there are many Sikhs on campus, um, some of them don't wear the turban, not out of spite, not out of anger, or any of those things, but truly because if you're, for example, like an international student, yeah. you're already faced with so many struggles as an international student, like not knowing the language. Yeah. You don't want to stand out more on top of that. Yeah, and you just, yeah, but but it's a thing. This is you know this is always the case. Like you know when I travel abroad, how much. How much is it, how comfortable am I just letting it really be known that, I, you know, I don't know, I'm an American or whatever, which is fine. It's not, not a problem with that, but it's kind of like sometimes we want to blend in and sometimes we want to be who we are. And so you're being who you are. This is your, this is your ancestry. It's your religion. It's your background. So I, I, really, I really appreciate that. Um, dude, that's it, man. Dude. Thanks, man. Oh, that sounded. Did you get a couple of good shots? Yeah, dude. Hang on. Can you? By the way, this is this is a good moment for you. So, Alessandra here has been taking photos in 119 for I don't know the past several semesters, right? Um, since 2021, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, what do, and so what do you do with the photos? So people know, like, like yeah. you've got some nice shots of him probably, right? Um, yeah, so all the photos actually go to the Social 119 website. Um, so if you go on, like, the social19.org and scroll to the bottom, there's a gallery portion. Um, and we filter out. They stay up for about a class or two after. So if you're a volunteer, I recommend looking, like, tomorrow or tonight. Um, yeah, and they should be up for, like, about a week. Yeah, it's, ni it's nice. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And it's good. Yeah. How is it taking photos? I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know what kind of question I want to ask you, but it's, oh, there it is. Oh, right? yeah. So Look at that, man. There's some good shots of you all. So, Dude, you're killer. You, you've gotten very good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's very, very interesting. It's very different taking pictures, like, in the classroom setting versus, like, the studio setting that I usually work in. Um, the lighting's very different. Yeah. Lighting here kind of sucks. Um, yeah. Just when you're up here, remember to smile. Otherwise, you're going to get pictures of you up there with, like, funny faces. So remember to smile when you're a volunteer. Yeah. And always try to look at me. I know, like, you have to look at Sam, but, like, try yeah, to, try to glance at the her, camera once in a while. Yeah, sometimes you're volunteering and you see her taking a photo, give her, like, one really good shot. Yeah. Like, sometimes when she's taking a photo of me, I'll pose. Yeah. Dude, thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks. Dude. Dude. <laughs> All right, man. All right, bro, introduce yourself, man. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Jasim. I'm from uh, Kuwait. And uh, thank you for having me, Sam. Dude, thanks, thanks for, for being, being here. here. So, so listen, sure. so, so, I, so, so, this, so I show you this the other day. And, um, and I couldn't remember. I, so whenever I'm in the Gulf, I always pick these kafias up. Kafias, kafaya. Uh, these are uh, shmag or qitras. Uh, what do you call it? Shmag. Shmag. Yeah, shmag. Shmag. Yeah. And this is Kuwaiti. Uh, no, this is uh, Qatari. 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 Yeah. How do you know it's Qatari? Well, uh, 
Judging from the color, the fabric, and from the pattern here, yeah. I would say it's Qatari. All right. So listen, man. And, and this? this? Well, this is uh, Agal, and basically the, the string gives it away. It's also Qatari. Yeah. Uh, this is a part of the traditional uh, Arabian Gulf uh, countries' uh, uniforms. This is, goes on like the head. And then usually we wear like Dishdasha or Thob or Kandora. Yeah. Uh, but like you only have like the, the half of the uniform. So, yeah, I have a Dishdasha at home. Um, cool. Actually, that's from Yemen. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, dude, so what's the purpose? Like, how, first off, how do you wear it? Wait, we get it. We need some. Dude, can you model this? Come here, man. Can you put, put, the, put, this, put this on him, man? Me? Yeah, go ahead. It's supposed to be you the first time. Yeah, no. I, I have my microphone, so we'll put it on him. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. All right, so yeah, hold the mic. Uh, you're supposed to. Sure, sure. Dude, no. <laughs> all right, so first of all, you, ha you have to have. Um... Wait, hang on. I'm, I'm going to stand back here. Uh... So you're lining, lining up, up into, into a, per a perfect, perfect triangle. triangle. Here. All, all right. right. Turn around so people see what you're doing. So you have to have a gahfiya or tagiya on his head. It's like the, the white thing. So it can hold the, the shmag. But in this case, it's okay, I guess. Um, and the tip here. You're supposed to iron this bit so it's like pointy. So it can like give a, a better structure, you know. Got yeah. So let's just try this. Dude, these are cool, man. All right, so I'm gonna do this. You should, you should hold this here, like close on your, yeah, yeah, like this. So you guys can see him. Uh, he looks a little go goofy, but that's okay. Just hold this for a second. So, so, so this holds it on. And and you, but, but it doesn't, doesn't say, but it seems like it sits more yeah, on the top of his head. Because this is a little small for him, though. He's for supposed him? to have, yeah, like have a bigger one. He has a big head. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, just raise your head. All right, let's see. Blame my mom. Dude. All right, just hold on. So you, so you can wear it in lots of different ways. Now, this is not the, like, the best way to put it because he has to have a tagiye. Um, yeah. It's going to fall off, but I guess this like, summarizes it. And then with mm -hmm. the dishdashas, like, it's going to be like completed. So, so if this is larger and fits his head, the idea yeah. is you it's just gonna, pull it's gonna it down around it. Yeah. and it holds it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what's the, what's what's the purpose, purpose, right? I mean, what's, what's what? the key for, for wearing these? Like protection from the elements, I imagine. Well, I, I'm not sure with the history of it, but um, it's our traditional uniform, yep. and it can go both ways. It's actually, if you actually wear this in the cold, it's it can get you really warm. Uh huh. Yeah. So the times that you like, if you if you wear this in, like in a closed small room, you're actually gonna like start sweating because this is actually hot. Uh huh. Uh, so um, it's really effective. It's <laughs> it's effective in the cold weather. Yep. Um, it covers your face, protects it. Uh, like in which way you put it, and then, um, yeah, in style, basically. And other, like, the, the, like, desert winds and stuff, I mean, you're going to be really protected with this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, it can, it can also be used in, in that way. A lot of people use it in that way. So back home, yeah. how often do you wear, wear those? There are, st there are uh, different styles of how you, uh, we call it, yeah, nesfe, which is, uh, yeah. Dude, you can just hang out with us here, okay. dude. You're the, you're styling. Okay. All right. So as I was saying, uh, the way you fold it on your head is called nesfe, and there are uh, multiple ways uh, for putting it, but um, this is basically the, the, the common way of uh, doing it, and uh, you can get like creative with it, I guess. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And so, what, so how often do you wear it back home? 
Um, we were in uh, Eid, which is our uh, celebration. Uh, but like, did, so does your grandfather wear it? Every yeah, yeah, yeah. Day? There, there are people that actually wear it a lot because they find it comfortable. Yeah. Uh, depending on how you know they were raised, to like, um, they find it effective just to wear it all the time. Um, but personally, I wear it for like formal gatherings and stuff because uh -huh. it's 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 like the main formal uh, traditional uh, uniform for our. And when culture. You, and when did you start wearing? Um, when did you get your first one? I was, I think, six months old when my grandmother took me and like she put like she, she put me in everything and then she got me to the studio and uh, got a couple of shots and then she has me like uh in a picture yeah. <laughs> in the living room or something <laughs> yeah damn all right and then when it won't fall off dude yeah you got it yeah you're good yeah it won't fall off. yeah, yeah, yeah. What, and then when when did you start wearing them for formal gatherings i'm saying like starting middle school maybe uh-huh yeah, yeah. uh-huh yeah when like okay you're like Dude, you're like now you look like a man, so you like you gotta dress like men, uh, other men, and stuff like that. You yeah. gotta be like in the traditional uniform and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I would say in like middle school. Yeah. Yeah, I got to it. Like when you're in the golf, when I'm in the golf, uh, I mean, I'm often in places where almost all the men are wearing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is what they're wearing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, and, if you if you go to the mall, yeah. actually, a lot of people uh, wear that also. You uh -huh. may find them there. Uh, because as I said, it's like you want to look uh, at your prime. You got to wear this like the most traditional and uh, yeah. Like so, yeah. if you go out to the mall, yeah. Like if your dad, if your parents go out to the mall, mm -hmm. and by the way, going to the mall and the golf is kind of a big deal. Why? Because uh, malls are cool. They're huge, yeah. man. They're huge <laughs> they are. And they're, they yeah. are. And in the summertime, it's so it's so hot that the mall is a yeah. place to go and hang out. Yeah, really. Yeah. But if you go to the mall, you. I mean, everyone's all the men are wearing these. I mean, it's because you're out. You're out, like, kind of doing your thing. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. How are, yeah, how, how about Kuwaitis who don't, let's say, we'll just talk about Kuwait for a second. How about, like, people mm -hmm. who don't wear, ever wear them? They just wear Western clothes. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just uh, out of, um, how do I say this? It's not usual for them to. Like, this is our tradition, this is our culture, so you're like, we expect you to wear one. But in reality, there are people that don't like to wear it. Yeah. Like, everyone has their personal reasons. Yeah. But I personally, I, I like to wear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I have a number of friends who mm -hmm. just never You can wear also them. wear uh, the, the dish dash or the thob, uh, and you don't have to wear the qatra gal. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it is hot, right? <laughs> it is really hot. Yeah. You can, like, just go creative with whatever you want to wear. Like, you yeah. can wear this, you can wear only dish dash, so that's okay. Yeah, but but you cannot you cannot wear this without dishdasha like what you yeah, guys did. Yeah, you can't did. wear it with like jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's like yeah. you're gonna get made fun of it. Dude, awesome. You're gonna end up on TikTok or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll come to class one day. Yeah, sure. Wearing yeah. this. I'll end up on TikTok. <laughs> Dude, awesome man. Yeah. So when you guys do events here. Like the like Haliji Student Association and the Saudi students or Kuwaiti students, mm -hmm. Emirati mm -hmm. or whatever. You guys will all, because I've been to many events of your, where yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. comes wearing. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on if you actually brought it with you from home or not. Yeah, everyone yeah, who brought one, I, yeah. they wear Like it. if someone brought it, they actually would. That would be like awesome. Oh, hey, man, you got this, you know, you brought it with you. I forgot to bring mine. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's all. Yeah. It, but but it, it is, um, like if you, if you actually uh, bring yours, um, it is, I would think, uh, it's considered as respect for your country. Like, you brought your traditional uniform with you yeah. to represent your country. That would be good. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome, right, dude? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I Thanks, bro. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Hey, so let's, uh, let's do, we can... Um, do the quiz. On your, hey, but let me, make, let me make a statement here really fast as we get ready to do the quiz. Uh, hey, um, don't... Yeah, don't cheat, okay? Because it doesn't matter. Yeah, and after you're done... 
You're going to see the last question on the quiz is going to ask you to do something. Hey, look at listen. Hang on. I do want to say something really seriously. Um, if you can't if you can't get on the Wi-Fi, just give yourself a hot minute. All right, uh, like go into airplane mode, even on your computer. Turn Wi-Fi off. Turn it back on. It's fine. The quiz quiz is going to stay open until the end of class. So if you don't start right away, you're okay. But seriously, I want to emphasize: uh, don't cheat. Okay, cool. Just take the damn quiz.